Okay, thank you everybody for joining us for, uh, for class number two on this very important topic, uh, Morning is Rebuilding. Uh, so last week we spoke primarily about uh, the concept of, of mourning, uh, the concept of the purpose of the, the remembering. Um, and uh, we delved into the concept of that it's part of the process of rebuilding the base amygdas. Uh, that, that, that's part of the whole process. Uh, that, and that was some of the things that, that we spoke about uh, regarding the, the, uh, in last week's class, and I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, today, today's class, I want to delve more into some of the things, some of the practices that we do uh, during the three weeks and the nine days. Um, the FYI, tonight, uh, and uh, in just about a couple of minutes, uh, it's going to be Rosh Chodesh. Um, once sunset hit, it's going to be Rosh Chodesh, and it'll be the ninth of Av, and we are starting the nine-day period. Uh, the nine-day period is the second phase of mourning uh, in this period of time. We have the three weeks, and we have broken down into uh, the first part up until the nine days, and then uh, we have Tisha B'Av itself, the ninth of Av. Now, Svardim, uh, people from uh, Svardic uh, descent, it breaks, it breaks down a little different. I don't want to get into that, uh, but uh, they still, there's still uh, this idea of adding on some uh, restrictions. So I primarily want to, we're going to go through some of those. Uh, we're going to go through them. We're going to expand on them a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to talk about three key ideas um, that we're supposed to learn uh, and grow from the different things that we uh, that, that we're going to be discussing about in the first part of the class. So that's sort of just a, a structure of the class. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. So just to get, uh, just to get into uh, some practicalities, right, uh, and some, uh, uh, some, some ideas, as I mentioned, this period of time is called the three weeks, right? Now, the three weeks start from the 17th of Tammuz, the fast, and ends on a fast, uh, Tisha B'Av, right, uh, from fast to fast. That's what it is. You know, uh, the Svirat uh, to Omer is from holiday to holiday, um, and uh, the three weeks is from fast to fast. So what happened on the 17th of Tammuz? What happened on the, what happened on, on, the, um, on, on Tisha B'Av? So not to get uh, too much into this, because uh, a lot of us know what happened, uh, but uh, the thing that I want to primarily talk about is that the, the, in biblical times, the first start of this period of time being a difficult time, there was two major events that happened to the Jewish people all the way from the beginning of when they became a nation. Two major events that have determined this period of time to be a difficult time for the Jewish people. The first was the sin of the golden calf and the breaking of the tablets. And that happened on the 17th of Tammuz. And then the, the other one is the sin of the spies, where the spies came and spoke evil talk about Eretz Yisrael. The Jewish people said they didn't want to go into the land of Israel. They cried that whole night. The decree of all the Jewish people from age 20 to 60 to die in that period of time. And God said, you guys cry for no reason. It'll be a time for crying. So those are two major events all the way back in biblical times. And then that period of time in between this has become called Bain Ham Tzarev. The prophet calls it, he said, um, he calls it, this is a time of, uh, and we, we, we say, and all her oppressors have overtaken her within the status, between Bain Ham Tzarev, between these two pillars of, of, of mourning. So we have to first understand what is this period of time? We have to understand that this period of time is, is a biblical, is all the way from the biblical times that Jewish people have had hard times. We are the ones that created it. We're the ones that created it through our Averot, through our sin, our transgressions. But there's these two pillars of, of, of hardships, of difficulties that has happened to the Jewish people that, that, that what's it called again? that have created this period of time. And then, of course, later other things happen. Destruction of the temple and the burning of the Sefer Torah and Betar being destroyed and, 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 and other things, terrible things that have happened. But, but, but we have to understand what are we talking about during this period of time? And, and, and to the extent that this period of time has become a time that is, is, is dangerous for the Jewish people. 
uh, you know, uh, it's brought down in the code of Jewish law. It's not only a nice philosophical thing. It's not only a thing that we do for ourselves, but it's brought down in the code of Jewish law. It's brought down in the Shulchan Aruch, the code of Jewish law, that one should refrain, if possible, from having a, a court case during this period of time or, or an audit or whatever it is. Right, if someone is able to push it off till after, either do it before or push it off till after the after Tishbab, one should preferably push it off because it is a it's a time, sad time for the Jews. It's a hardship. It's a hard time for the Jews. Uh, we don't. We're not in the. We're not in the right favor. But it's not our time. And, and therefore, right, it's brought down that people should refrain, and especially during the nine days, it's more intense. We, we refrain from doing certain things, and it's just good to know where this comes from, why we do this. We, we start refraining from doing certain things to, to remind us and, to, and to, to let us know what this period of time is all about. And so, so it, it's, it's important to first realize where this is coming from, and, and, and the lesson that we have to, because everything is a lesson, and the lesson that we have to learn from this concept is, as, as I hinted to it that I was talking before, and I'm going to speak it out more now, that we are the ones that caused this. In, in, in Judaism, there's no thing that just happens. There's no thing that just happens. Even the holidays, right? Pesach, we came out of, we came out of Egypt during that time. Moshe took us out. Of course, God's the one who orchestrated for happened, right? The Yom Kippur, it's because that's when God forgave us. Moshe is up in heaven for 40 days and 40 nights during the month of Elul, asking for forgiveness, and God forgave the Jewish people. There's, there's a rhyme and reason, and, and there's a cause and effect. Everything has a cause and effect. This period of time that's hard for the Jewish people, it, it, in one hand, as sad and mourning, on the other hand, as dangerous, and we have to refrain from doing dangerous things to the extent of even court cases. We're the one that's created it. Sin of the golden calf and the sin of the spies. We're, we, our ancestors were the ones that created it. And, and, and therefore, we have to reflect on this important lesson to remind ourselves that we have to make sure right, that, that our actions that we do mimic and, 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 and make sure that, that bad things don't come out. Make sure that, that, that good things are happening. And because our actions have an effect. Our actions have an effect. What we do makes a difference. So now, let's, let's, that's just a side important point to, to remember. Now, now, let's get into some of, the, some of the, 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 the laws, the halakha of these period of time. Uh, and then we're going to get into some of the reasons behind them um, and, and, and lessons that we can learn. And as I said, we'll, we'll talk about three major concepts that we're supposed to uh, uh, learn from this period of time. So number one, some of these are famous, some of them are not uh, less famous, right? Um, number one, uh, during the three-week period, and again, this is for Ashkenazic Jews primarily, right? Uh, during the three-week period, right, we don't hold weddings, right? Uh, engagements are, are, are okay, um, but we don't hold weddings. Uh, we, don't have, we don't have weddings during this period of time. Um, but uh, we do not listen to music. Uh, we do, primarily we don't listen to to live music, uh, even to tapes and things like that, because again, music uh, makes you in a happy mood. Right? And and just to re, re remind ourselves, right? As I mentioned in this morning's morning minute, which is a very important morning's minute, it does not mean to say that we're supposed to be sad. It doesn't mean to say that we're supposed to be depressed. God forbid, right? We always have to be happy. Right? There has to be an internal happiness. Right? But even in mourning, even when we're mourning, we're supposed to uh, realize that we're mourning is a mitzvah. We have to realize that we have to do this, believe it or not, in happiness. It's not a contradiction. We have to mourn with happiness. It's not the secular happiness that we think of, you know, uh, ah, it's great. You can be crying and you can still be internally happy inside. And that's why it says, we lessen, we, we decrease the happiness, right? Because you always have to make sure that you have an internal happiness inside. It's, you, you can't survive without it. That's depressed, right? God does not want us to be depressed, right? So, so when we're talking about 
memayet, the limiting, the, the, the happiness, we have to remind ourselves that this is all things that make us happier. So music, right? And again, I'm not getting into the technical laws. This is not a, a, a class of law. Right? Just bringing this out just for us to understand what's going on this period of time, right? But we have to, we, do, you know, there's, there's certain ideas that if, uh, I remember I was driving from, uh, from, from New York to, uh, to Toronto one time and, you know, I was getting late and I needed some music to, uh, to keep me occupied. Right? So then you're allowed to listen to music for that. Right? There's a concept of acapella and things like that, but it, just to make you in a more of a higher joyous mood, right? Uh, one's not supposed to listen to music uh, because that makes you into more joyous, uh, more, more joyous thing. Right? We, we we avoid public uh, public celebrations like a wedding, uh, dancing, and, and all that kind of stuff. Right? Um, we avoid uh, big trips. Right? Big like uh, expensive trips. Some people, you know, uh, avoid those. Uh, a more common thing is no haircuts, right? Uh, shaving, right? Like a mourner. Uh, and then also we don't make shechianu a new cloth or, 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 or a new food, right? Because a shechianu reminds us that we're, we're very happy. We're, we're getting something new, getting something special. So those are the things for the three weeks. Um, and and the, if you notice, they're all primarily things of, uh, that we avoid for, for joyous things, right? For, for joyous things, uh, an excessive of joy. Now, the, the, the nine days, right? We, the nine days is when the month of Av starts. Now, what happened on the month of Av? The walls of Jerusalem, the, the, the temple walls were breached. Right? The walls of Jerusalem were breached on the 17th of Tammuz. Now, Jerusalem had many walls, right? And the walls of the temple... The temple was not destroyed for another nine days, but the outer walls, maybe where the Kotel is today, or maybe there was another wall further back, not sure exactly, but the walls of the temple were destroyed on, on were breached on Rosh Chodesh Av, and that, the next nine days is called the nine days. And we intensify, right, our, our uh, we intensify our mourning, right? Uh, so we, we, uh, we, we're, we don't eat meat, uh, right, that we made sure to have a good meat meal this afternoon, right, to, to get in our, our meat, right, I'm sure, uh, I hope you all got your meat for those meat lovers, right, uh, and and uh, we, we don't drink wine, some people have a custom, they come home, they drink a cup of wine, and we don't drink wine, this again, except for Shabbat, right, now this is, this is something I mentioned before, right, we avoid, primarily during the nine days, we avoid going to a court case, Right? We avoid uh, taking, uh, going to the beach or flying on an airplane if, 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 if uh, just for, for no reason in particular. Right? Uh, we, we, avoid, uh, we avoid taking pleasure baths. Right? So uh, you need to take a shower, of course take a shower, right? but uh, you know, don't hang out in there too much or make sure the water is more lukewarm than if you like a boiling hot, make it more lukewarm. You're not supposed to take a bath for pleasure. Right, uh, you're supposed to be clean, and God wants you to be clean. We're very Judaism's very into cleansingness. We wash our hands all the time and and onwards. Right? But we have to make sure that we don't take it for 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 a pleasure, uh, for pleasure. So so we see that, and again, just to uh, sort of just to highlight these ideas, and now we're going to get more into the the depth behind it. Right, but we see that the nine days, which we're starting. In just uh, 20 minutes or something, that's when sundown is, right? Um, the, we see that the nine days intensifies the morning, right? Um, but also is adding on the j danger factor. And, and I want to talk about the danger factor for a minute because I think it's something very important. Um, you know, uh, you stay anonymous, but I got a phone call from someone, uh, you know, saying that um, they, uh, they experienced a little, some anti Semitism. Right? The, it was a nonchalant conversation, right? Um, and uh, you know, and they wanted to talk about it. And uh, thank God it was just, it was it was unintentional and things. This is never unintentional, but I don't, I don't want to get too too sidetracked on that. But the point I want to bring out is right that what I was telling him is that uh, you know we have to realize right that especially during this period of time. We have to realize that we're still in exile. We're still in, still in Gauls. 
And, 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 and the, the concept of us doing, and as we spoke about last week, right, the idea of recognizing when God is recognizing, mourning for it, right, but, but I want to home in on some of the practices that we do. When we, when we don't pl fly in a plane, right, unless there's a necessity, and some say nowadays planes are, are very safe and it's a little different, but still, you know, unless you really have to, right, uh, for a job interview, things like that, right, there's leniencies. Right, but unless you don't have to, we don't drive in a plane. We, we try to avoid a court case. We try to avoid, uh, you know, long drives. We try to avoid going to, to the beach besides the water, right? If it's windy or things like that, it could be dangerous, right? Uh, we try to avoid dangerous things. It, it's for us to realize that until we're back in our homeland, until the, the Mashiach is here, there's danger for us, as comfortable as we get. As as comfortable as things are, right? Uh, we could be. We could have. Uh, you know, I, I saw someone posted uh, on Facebook. Uh, you know, there's a Jewish person, a religious person. That's what I was doing. It's an Orthodox person running for Congress. I think it was. And that's great. I have no problems with it. But if we think that we're comfortable because of that, if we think that we're secure because of that, I don't want to put anybody's uh, you know mind uh, to get to get all crazy and then uh, to sound morbid. But I'm being a realist. We have to realize that we're in exile. And, and the practices that we're doing during this period of time, not, not as, you know, reminding ourselves that, that uh, we try to avoid situations of, of, of hatred. We try to avoid uh, hardships and, 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 and difficulties, and even court cases in non-Jewish courts, is to remind ourselves that we are in mourning, but we're in mourning because we're out of our homeland. And that's something very important that we have to reflect on and something to think about. And, and, and those are some of, the, some of the practices that we do. As I mentioned, we're going to get into some of the practices that we do. Some of the practices that we do is supposed to remind us of this danger, this, 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 uh, this, this danger that we're in. And, and sometimes we say, really, we're in danger? Yes, we are. We're in danger. We bless God every day that overall the government's behind us, and we thank God every day that there is a system in place, right, and, and things are running the way they're supposed to. But who are we kidding ourselves? In the past, it's been countries like this too. Spain, the, the sultan's pri private physician was a Jew, the rabbi. Germany, in the early 1900s, there were doctors and lawyers and, and in the military. And look through history. No, I, I don't want to sound like, God forbid, that, the, you know, I, I'm saying anything's going to happen. But we have to think and we have to be aware. We have to be grateful for what we have. But at the same time, we have to be realistic and realize that this is not our homeland. We are in exile. And I can't say it enough. We have to remind ourselves we are in exile. And if we don't remember that, if we don't think about that, then we're not, our priorities are never going to be straight because we're always going to be thinking that it's okay, it's this and that. And I'm not saying not to buy a nice house and I'm not saying not to invest and not to do that. We have to live our lives, of course. We have to remember that we're in exile. And, and, and the practices that we do, the things that we do is to remind us that. That's why we do all this stuff. Right? That's why we 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 that's why we we, we lessen in, in, in simcha. We don't eat meat. Right nowadays, you know, someone said, you know, okay, so what's the big deal? So we have soy this and we have soy that and we have eggplant parmesan and we have pizza and we have that. You're right. You're right. It might not be so hard not to eat meat nowadays. And there's a, you know uh, so many people that don't eat meat all the time. But but let's think about it. If let's say you're a vegetarian, you can say, well, I'm not feeling any pain. This is beautiful for me, right? Now, uh, you know, they have, some of the meat restaurants have vegetarian, more vegetarian, or soy, or whatever it is. You're right. It might not affect you personally, but learn about it. Think about it. Why, did, why is there such a law? So, so, so those are some of the practical things that we do during this period of time. And why we do them, right? Uh, to to and, and the importance, and, and I wanted to home in on today the the, the concept of danger, the concept of of of, of anti-Semitism, the concept of that we're not in a safe world. And, and I'm sorry to say, my friends, right? I think now we could all realize that there are 
here in Jacksonville, thank God we're pretty much safe, right? But there are places that it's not safe and people can start realizing that more. Now, I'm not saying why anything happens, but we have to learn. We don't say why things happen, but things happen. We have to reflect in, internally and think about it. What are we supposed to learn from it? So, so now let's, let's, let's home in on, 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 you know, three ideas. Any questions or comments? Okay. So, so, and again, please feel free to write in the comments if you have any questions or comments. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to respond to them. So, so now I, I want to, I wanna, three lessons, three important lessons that we could learn, right, from, 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 the, from the hardships that we endure. Right, the, the 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 things that we make our lives more difficult, right, during this period of time, right, uh, you know, because it's not really the way we are, right, especially the American society, right, and when I say American society, Canadian, sorry, I include you too, and I'm talking to myself, right, <laughs> it's all North American society, right, the Western civilization, right, we're into uh, we're into comfort. We're into uh, making life easier, uh, the shortest way, the easiest way, right? We have snack bars everywhere, right? We have, uh, on the highway, we have uh, rest stops, and, uh, and we have all the different amenities that we need, and, and comforts, and the most comfortable pillow, and the my pillow, and, and, and this, and that, and who knows what, self-controlled air conditioning, and self-controlled cars, right? We're a society, that is constantly looking for, for comfort, constantly looking for to, anything to avoid pain, right? Uh, I'll constantly hear this advertisement on, on the radio when I'm listening to talk shows, right? Uh, the pain factor, right? Uh, I'm sure you've all heard it also. This pill that you take, a magical pill, right? it takes away all your pain, right? Trust me, there's nothing that takes away all your pain, but whatever, right? Uh, but magically, I swear by it, uh, says all these talk shows, and take it and guarantee and get your money back. Oh, no pain, no pain, right? We're, 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 we're a society that is, that is of looking to avoid pain, looking for all forms of comfort. And I'm not saying this, it's wrong, but we're a society like this. And here comes Tisha B'Av, sort of goes against our whole society. It goes, a whole, goes against a whole way of, of acting, three weeks, right? And, 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 then, and, then, and then nine days, and then Tisha B'Av, Right? Oh my gosh, we have to do laundry, right? Oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. I'm supposed to do laundry, and unless you really need it, supposed to do it beforehand. So what are we supposed to learn? Okay, maybe in Europe and things like that, they're used to hardships, but we're not like that. So, so I want to home in on, on three lessons, as I mentioned, three lessons uh, um, that, that one could learn from and, and, and grow right, from, from these things that we're supposed to do. Um, okay, so, so number one, uh, the, the, the therapeutic value of remembering. So we talked about this last week a little bit, but I want to home in more on this, right? There's, we, we, we talked about last week the concept of if we don't remember, then we, we can't grow from it. We're supposed to remember from, from old times, and, and, and we, we, we honed in on this a little bit last week, but I want to expand on it a little more. There's a, um, there's a very famous idea, right, that, um, that, that, that one, of the, one of the steps of, 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 uh, of recovery, and I'm no expert, I just did a little research, right, I've seen other people speak, compare, make comparisons, and one of the, one of the forms of, of recovery, right, from addiction, from, from anything that someone's trying to recover, is to to speak about your your hard times, right? To to speak about your rock bottom, right? To 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 have a conversation about it. That that's one of the forms of therapy. To 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 in some in, in some AA meetings, people get up and speak in public, right? Uh, that's what uh, you know. In a more one on one to get to the ability to be able to say the things that you've done or the, the, where you've reached when you reach rock bottom, that's very therapeutic. 
why is it so therapeutic? What's so special about it? And, and the, the idea is that once you've recognized, once you bring forth to where you are now that you've reached rock bottom, you've gone so low, then there's only room to, to grow from there. There's only, there's, only a, 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 there's only ability to now take a step forward. Because I, 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 I have, I've, 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 I've spoken to other people about my hardship. I, other people have comforted me. Other people understand me. I'm not hiding it anymore. And a lot of times people feel like they have to hide. Right? And they don't want anybody else to know. And therefore they're hiding in this and they're not speaking about it. They're not, they're not, they're not communicating about it. And, 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 and it eats them up. It, it literally eats them up. And, 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 and they, they can't move forward from that. And they're always trying a, a situation of making sure that no one knows. And they can never look, think about go, growing from where they are and changing. So, so speaking about your, your, your hardships and, and, and getting it out there is the only way to, only way to grow, only way to, to, to take the next step. You know, it's, 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 it's not, it's, let me say it like this. There's a, there's a phrase in Yiddish that is used to explain a passage of Talmud, right? Of, or, or anything that someone, but felt in Hasbara, felt in Havana. What lacks in the ability to articulate, lacks in the ability of understanding. So if you can't articulate, you know, you keep on talking, I mean, look, if you can't articulate your words clearly, then you yourself are not sure yet what you want to say. And if you're not able to express what, where your rock bottom was, if you're not able to talk about it, then you yourself are not yet comfortable, are, not, are, are still in turmoil within, within that rock bottom. And therefore, the only way is to express it, is to talk about it, is to open yourself up. And therefore, you have to, you have to talk. You have to talk. And, and my friends, that say the commentaries right, is the same idea of Tisha B'Av itself and, and this three weeks and this, this difficult time. That what we do is we talk about our rock bottom. What is a Jewish people's rock bottom? We don't hide about it. It's this period of time as we started a class, the sin of the golden calf all the way to the beginning of where we started, the sin of the, of the spies. The Jewish people sinning for the destruction of the temple it didn't just happen as a cause and effect. Throughout the ages, the Jewish people being uh, influenced and, and integrated with society and catastrophe and, and difficulties have happened. So the, the idea of these weeks, the idea of, of, of remembering is much more than we spoke about last week. It's really, it's not more. It's, 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 we, we are expanding on what we spoke about last week. On a, on a higher level, the idea of, of remembering is allowing you to grow, allowing you to recognize and realize where we have been and how low we have been as a nation. And therefore, we, we, we lament and we say the sins that we've done and we, and we mourn and we talk about destruction, we talk about hardship. And we recognize we're in exile, and we do we don't take haircuts, and we we try to avoid dangerous things. Not only talking, but we use all our senses. We action and and refrain, holding ourselves back, and learning about it and talking about it. And therefore, right, the idea of remembering is not only in in theory, not only in thought, not only for the history books. But we remember, as we spoke about last week, it's not history. We remember living now. We remember now through our actions. And the climax of this is Tisha B'Av, where we go ahead and we sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. We have tearful cries of the book of Echa. Right? We recall about the, the tragedy and, and the hardships. And we go into gore details of, of, of mothers eating their children, and the stories of the two children of the Kohen Gadol being sold into slavery, and so many others. We go into the details. We don't avoid it. 
we're sitting on the floor and we're crying and we're recognizing our lowest point. Because once we recognize our lowest point, once we recognize that we've been so low, then we can start growing. Then we can start recognizing our true, our, our true growth and our exile. Then we can have our right focus and we can make sure that we, 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 do the right, we go in the right direction. So that's one thought, one idea. Number two, moving out of pain towards healing requires a sustained process, right? Again, back to a, a, a treatment of, of, of addiction and, and, and I just wanna, we learn a lot of things from treatment of addiction and, and the reason I think it's so important is because we don't realize we're all addicted. We all have an addiction. We all have addiction of wanting things to stay status quo. I, I, I spoke about this in one of the morning minutes, I think it was last week, the new normal, right? We, we can't, we, we, things become the new normal. This is the way it is. We, 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 we have a hard time living with uncertainty, with, with, with uh, you know, change, with, with constant struggles. We just, we, we're addicted to wanting things just to status quo, just be the way they are. And, and, and we have to realize that Judaism is not like that. Because we can never live in a status quo. We always have to go either, we have to go grow, we have to go forward. We have to grow. Because if we're not growing, then we're, God forbid we're going downwards. Judaism is like an escalator. You're going up or you're going down. You can't stay in the same place. Therefore, a lot of the, a lot of the things thought, and again, it's all, the rabbis thought, knew about this way before any psychologist, anybody came out, everything's in the Torah. Right? But a lot of it is, is, is lessons for our, for our growth and getting out of things we, we learn from, 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 uh, from, from, from addiction. So right, is one of the things, one of it is a motivator and effect is, is designed with uh, uh, understanding of, of recognizing, right? Um, let's give me one second. Right? Realizing that it's, it's not quick or easy. Right, and and this we've talked about many times. Right, that it has to be a sustained process. It has to be a growth. Right, and they have this whole system. Right, you get different coins and different things. Right, and you have to just keep on coming. Right, and and I remember once speaking to um, someone that uh, ha had an addiction. Right, it's been clean for many years, but he always says, "I'm an addict. I have to constantly, every time, be aware." And I have to be conscious and aware <coughs> of my difficulties, and it's never over. And the, 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 our, our rabbis understood this, right? Now, throughout the year, of course, we, we have minute, small things throughout the year that remind us of destruction, that remind us of who we are, right? We spoke about this last week, breaking a glass at a wedding, Right, we sing Shir Ma'alot before before benching. Right uh, during this period of time, we sing Al Naras Babel. Right, we, we do different things. We say Yerushalayim Mircha, we should return to Jerusalem. But but the, the rabbis understood that that we need right. Uh, we need we need constant reminders throughout the year, and then certain times it has to be intensified. Right, so um, so the the the, the the Mishnah Bura quotes it like this. He says, says, um, one second. Yeah. So it says like this. It says, why do we stay? What, what's one of the reasons why we stay away from, from acts of, of comfort uh, so we spoke about that. We just spoke about the idea of, of remembering the morning, but but the, the 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 there's another idea, right? The other idea is right to that that we should not try to escape, right? Right? Our 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 pain. And we should try not to escape our pain, right? And 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 we we have to make sure that we experience the pain. Right, because if we experience the pain, 
right? then we'll be able to move forward because we have to realize that, that things take time. We, we can't just snap our fingers, tish above come, tish above goes, okay, we mourn, destruction, wow, very good, and move on. Why do we have a whole three-week period, three week period? We don't have that for Pesach. We don't have that for Rosh Hashanah. Okay, we have El, but it's still, it's not built in. We saw the sofa earlier. It's a custom. But, but the, 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 the Tisha B'Av, we have this whole three-week period where we lift, we up the pain a little bit. We up the uncomfortableness a little bit until we got to Tisha B'Av. We don't really find this anywhere else. Why? And, and the answer is to, to, to make us realize that it, you can't just have Tisha B'Av and, and out. Oh, remember the pain, the destruction, and remember that we're in exile and move out. Can be in and out. It has to be that it's something that it's 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 a steady process, right? And and just to, just to throw an anecdote, right? In in Jewish law, there's something called Shloshim Yom, thirty days, right? Is 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 a period of time that's considered a sustainable amount of time. Right? If someone loans something, loans money to someone, and they didn't uh, determine an amount of time, we say stam stam uh, a, a loan without a designated amount of time for how long, we say it's thirty days. So thirty days is sort of a, a period of time in, in Jewish thought and Jewish halacha and Jewish law where it's considered a, a, a significant time period. Right. Um, we find this in, 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 in Jewish law, right? So, so therefore, say the commentaries that the rabbis, right, have made, right, now it's, it's a little less than 30 days because it's three weeks, right? Um, so it's a little less than 30 days. Uh, but but the, the idea is that there's a significant amount of time it did it during this time because of the sins of the eagle and things like that, like we spoke about. Right? But there's a, this concept that we, we have to build ourselves up into recognizing Tisha B'Av, to be able to sit on the floor and truly recognize our pain. You can't just snap your fingers and it happens. To, to recognize our hardships and to recognize our faults and, and to gr be able to grow through that, doesn't say it's not an overnight thing. It's a process. And therefore, the rabbis have built up, right? the Chachamim have built up the process by, by first by first the three weeks, right? Uh, limited amount of, 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 of sadness and hardship, right? No beard and cut, hair cutting and live music and things like that. And, and then the nine days we intensify it and then Tishabav even more, right? Because we can't, we can't say I have a pain for, for, for 24 hours or 27 hours and then I'm done. And this is an important lesson in life that when you wanna you wanna experience something, you wanna you wanna be able to truly understand something and grow through something and get over something, you have to let yourself have time to work on. You can't just think that by a snap of the fingers it's gonna happen. To give yourself time, you have to make sure that 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 you have a, and you built yourself up into it, like we spoke about in growth. Now we spoke about this in growth that the growing. Right, it's spiritual growth, it's one step at a time. It's the same thing with, with, with reflecting back into your, your, your hardship and your difficulties and, your, and, and, and where you come from and, and what you're doing it takes time. And therefore, say the commentaries, that's one of the reasons why the rabbis have, have, have created it in this process, in, in the slow growth process uh, of pain. Um, just to um, just to, to to just to sort of contrast, where if someone, God forbid, loses a, a, a parent, right? It's the other way around, right? We first have the most intense is the day of of, more, of the day of of Kura, the day of burial. And then you have Shiva, the seven days of mourning, and then you have Shloshim, the to the, to the end of the thirty, thirty days, and that's the other way around. We have the most intense, and then less intense. Still very intense, the shiva, and then less intense, the the thirty days, and then we have the year, which is even less, much more int less intense. And the idea over there is, is the healing process also needs it can't, you can't just heal overnight, right? This idea of people going to work the next day or Judaism has a right. You you have to mourn. You have to stay home for seven days. You can't go to work. 
right? You got to mourn. You got to reflect. You got to think. And then there's a the 30 days. Because, because in the healing process, it takes the same way. You can't just have things happening overnight. Things don't just happen overnight. You have to, you have to take it one step at a time. You have to reflect and, and, and you have to build yourself up. So during this period of time, we're building ourselves up to the climax of Tisha B'Av. As we said, we sit on the floor and remember the destruction and, and recognize our, 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 our darkest times of history, a, a rock bottom. And then the other way, when we, when we, when one is, uh, you know, being confident for mourning, you have your hardest, and then you slowly but surely peter that away. And, and say the commentaries, that's why the rabbis have broken down uh, with all these different things slowly to build ourselves into it. And that's an important lesson to us to, to reflect and to, to realize that's the only way to rebuild ourselves is by building ourselves slowly but surely uh, within uh, the, the process of, of, of the destruction. And uh, last but not least, right, but uh, the last for, for tonight, right, um, that the, 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 the um, sorry, number three is, right, the redemption, right, the, the redemption, the redemption power of pain, right, the power of pain, right, so, a lot of times we, as, as I started off, we, we as a, a society, we try to avoid pain. And there's nothing wrong with that. Try to avoid pain. You know, um, but uh, I was, um, I, uh, today I was, I was, uh, had some free time. I was sitting, I was flipping through Facebook, right? Uh, and, um, which I do regularly. Um, and, um I, I saw, so I had like an advertisement of a video clip of the Titans or something. It's a new thing. I think I don't know. Could be it's old. I don't know. But uh, it's it's like uh, similar to like American guy, American uh, American Ninja Warriors, but it's uh, with uh, more intense, uh, you know, uh, strength and and things like that. U utilizing different strengths. And, and, you know, they were, they were interviewing one of them and they said, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's the pain that allows me to, to, to keep on pushing. And there, there's, there, you know, the, the, the pain of building my muscles and, 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 and constantly, uh, you know, pushing myself uh, and pushing myself. And I was thinking, saying, even our society is a society of comfort. And, but there are people that realize that the only way to grow sometimes is through pain, is through hardship. Now they want it, right? They want it because they want to grow. Uh, the same thing, people that, you know, bust themselves as, you know, interns in a law firm, you know, uh, for a couple of years and don't sleep and don't have a life because they want to become a partner or whatever job you're in. Because the only way to true growth, the only way to redemption, the true growth is, is through the power of pain. Is, is through recognizing that, that, that you, you have to have some pain in your life. Now, that pain could be a, a, an exciting, exhilarating. It could be hard, but you're excited about it. Or you could look at it as, as, as painful and, and, and interfering and then ruining my life. And, and that's the same thing in our spirituality and our spiritual growth. Right? We could look at uh, you know, uh, the hardships that we have as opportunities Oh my gosh, you know, uh, we, we have to wear a mask or whatever it is that we have to do or the hardships. I make sure that I commit to, to listen to class or to make sure I learn online or make sure I dive in even though I don't have a minion to go to, right? Or I do have a minion to go to even with all the restrictions. But whatever it is, the hardships that we're in, we can look at it as ugh and painful and disgusting and man, well, why do we have to do it? Or we can look at it as an opportunity of growth. An opportunity to, to, to become stronger in our Judaism. An opportunity to, to take the next level. God's giving us an opportunity to flex our muscles. To show God that I, we, want, we want to grow. That's what pain is. So we could either become depressed by it. We can become upset about it. We could, we could write articles and posts and things and everything about the negative of it. Or we could leave that all alone and internally grow from it and inspire other people and therefore the, the the rabbis have given us hardships during this period of time 
all these different things that we spoke about is to remind us a that for growth and recognizing that we're in exile we need hardship we need pain because the only way to truly grow the only way to truly recognize your success also is through the pain if there's no pain there's no gain as a famous song, a famous state, same statement goes right no pain no gain and, and, and we have to recognize that that's what Tisha B'Av is about. Tisha B'Av, one of the ideas of Tisha B'Av is about is for us to recognize that we have to find that inner pain and, and grow through it. As we said, we are not supposed to be depressed. And I'm going to remind people of that. We should never be depressed. We always have to be tamim b'simcha. Ivdus Hashem b'simcha. Serve God with simcha. And, and, and the uh, Tisha B'Av is serving God. So you have to be b'simcha. But that's an internal happiness because it's an internal recognizing your purpose in life. But we could have pain doing that. You could have pain and still be with Simcha internally. You might not have a smile. You might be crying. You'll be sitting on the floor. But, but you recognize that you're growing. You have an internal uh, direction in life. And that's what Tishra is about. We, we, we carve out the pain. We recognize the hardship. And we say, we're going to grow through this. And we're going to recognize what our, our, our priorities in life are. We're going to recognize what we, what we have to focus on and what we have to have pain for. So if it's tuition bills, if it's a little more charity to our organizations, making sure that our synagogues and our Jewish organizations are standing during this difficult time, we have to be a little harder on ourselves. If it's making sure that we make blessings over the food before we eat and remind ourselves and, not, and eat, but actually reflect and think and say, oh, thank you, God, for the food that we eat. If it's making sure that this year we're going to actually listen to Tisha B'Av, it's going to be online, no excuses. Yosef, we decided to, we're going to have it on Zoom. I hope you saw that on the email. We have a flyer. So you're going to make sure that... It, it changes your schedule. It's a, it's a little this, it's a little that, and things like that. There's pain. You have to have a little pain in life. Doesn't mean to say to make you, God forbid, depressed, but grow. You grow through it. That's another lesson we're supposed to learn through this period. The rabbi said, yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, it's against your culture. Yes, you can't have meat. I love meat. You guys know that. That's going to be hard. I don't mind the good eggplant parmesan and the good salmon and things like that. I like my meat. Okay, so I'll survive. But it's, I don't, the idea shouldn't be that I should survive. The idea that I should reflect and think, hey, I'm not having meat. Why not? Oh, right, because, because of the nine days, because of the difficulties. Let me grow through that pain. Let me channel that pain and not be upset, but on the contrary, say, hey, I'm going to grow. That is one of the greatest lessons that we're supposed to learn. The Medrash in Tehillim says something very powerful, and I want to close with this. We'll just wrap things up. And the Medrash in Tehillim says like this, Had I not fallen, I could not have arisen. Had I not sat in the darkness, right, he, we, he would not have been a light for me. And if I would not have fallen, I could have risen. If I wasn't sitting the lightness, I couldn't darkness. I couldn't have had the light to grow from. We all have falling. We all have pain. It's up to us to decide what we do with it. And that's what we're supposed to learn from this period of time. That's what we're supposed to learn when we sit on the floor. That's what we're supposed to learn when we don't get a haircut and we don't listen to music and we refrain from doing certain things and recognize that we're in exile and not drinking a cup of wine at the end of the day, except for Shabbat. That's what we're supposed to recognize. That, yes, there is pain, but we're supposed to grow through that pain. So let's uh, just quickly recap, and then we'll open up for, for questions, uh, if anybody has any questions. So just to recap, we started off just, first of all, talking about this whole period of time. It's called Bainam Tzarim, through two difficult periods of time. And we said that this is going back to biblical times of the sin of the golden calf and the sin of the miraglim, the sin of the, of the spies. And we, the lesson we're supposed to learn from that is that we cause this period of time, this hardship for the Jewish people, this, hard, this difficult time, we're the one that caused it through our avirot, through our sins. 
our transgressions because of the cause and effect in life. Then we went through some of the things that we do, and I'm not going to go through all of them. And right? it's easy to find, and right? not drinking wine and haircuts and, 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 and not washing ourselves for pleasure. Of course, we're cleansing this, but not for pleasure. And, and other things that we don't do during the three weeks and, and the nine days. Then we spoke about how, what three lessons are we supposed to learn? Because this is really against our culture, our society. We, are, we try to avoid pain. We try to avoid uncomfortable. We try to find things to go as easiest as possible. We spoke about three lessons. Number one, we spoke about the value, the, three, the value of remembering. And we expanded on what we spoke about last week, the idea of, of, of recognizing your rock bottom, recognizing and speaking about it and, and articulating it. Right? It's the only way to truly move forward and start moving yourself upwards. Right? Uh, and that's what Tisha is about. We express that through sitting on the floor and, and speaking about the hardships of the Jewish people and, and their lowest state. We expanded on that and how we're supposed to grow through that. Spoke about number two. We spoke about uh, you know it's making sure that uh, the that that you 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 the path of growth right of healing is through sustained process. It doesn't happen overnight, and and therefore that's why the rabbis broke it down into different segments. And we can't just snap our fingers more and then we're done. And we can't snap our fingers and, you know, this and then it's over. We have to have process. We have to have reflection. We have to have, grow into it. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, and, uh, and then the last thing we spoke about is the power of pain, like we just expanded on now, and that we have to have pain, but we have to make sure that our pain is a happiness pain, a growth pain. And just like people, you know, put themselves through painful situations because they want to grow and whatever, excel in whatever they're doing. So too, we have to realize that you will have pain, we'll have difficulties, we'll have times that are, are you know, uh, we, we might be made fun of or people say, really, you're doing that or, or emotional pain or, or time factor, we're going to have to give up on other things. And right? we have to actually think about what we do. Financial, not cheap being a Jew. But we have to realize that all that pain is for growth. And when we recognize that and reflect on that, that's a true power of, of redemption. Right? And that's what Tishma is about. We, we remember the darkness right? and we remember the hardship. And we say we're going to grow through that because, look, we're still around and we could grow and we could become the best that we can. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to.